What's going on guys? Car Review Guys here. My name is AJ and today we are back with a, another vehicle. This week we have the 2024 Hyundai Elantra Hybrid Limited. Uh, there are two trim levels available, the blue and the limited uh, for the hybrid. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this. If you are new to my channel, we are going to start with a cinematic. It's only like a minute. If you don't like it, skip forward. No big deal. Start with the exterior stats figures, stuff like that. And then we are going to be uh, jumping to the interior. Then we are going to be taking it on a drive. If there's anything you guys want to know, comment down below. I try to respond to every single person. Next video, five things to love, five things to improve. Every vehicle, every week gets that treatment. Over 20,000 subscribers. Thank each and every one of you. And without further ado, let's get rolling. Let's roll. Starting with the stats and figures as we just do a very slow walk around here. This 24 Elantra Hybrid has an inline four cylinder pushing 139 combined horsepower and 234 pound of torque combined as well. Transmission is a six speed auto front wheel drive drivetrain. Curb weight is coming in at around 3,069 pounds, and it's going to be pushing this Elantra from 0 to 60 in about 8.4 seconds. MPG is very important on a hybrid, and we are looking at 49 city, 52 highway, with a combined average of around 50 MPGs. Gas tank size is around 11 gallons. Vehicle dimensions, overall length, as we're here at the side profile, about 15.4 feet. And then your width, you're going to be looking right around 5.99 feet. Your blue trim level, which again, there's only two, and that is the base. It's going to be starting at around $26,250. And our tester today is $30,810, and that is including the destination charge. Let's take a look at the exterior a little bit closer. So here in the rear, the one thing that you're not going to notice probably as much from pictures is definitely from the side profile, just how much this kind of has a point to it. I think it looks really good. It actually looks aggressive, which is pretty wild to say on a hybrid. To press the button, you just simply press right there. Up it goes and you can see definitely a good amount of trunk space i will put all the cubic feet and actual stats here on the screen for you the rear seats do fold down you just simply pull there on both sides 60 40 split and then it is a manual trunk so you do have to close it yourself taking a look at the front it again i think it looks really aggressive i love the lines that they've done uh, you have led projector headlamps led runners uh, overall, again, I really love the new styling. Obviously, the newer updated Hyundai badge. All flat is rather large. You can see it compared to my hand. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it looks really, really good. Now, the other thing that people generally ask, which you can obviously find with a very quick Google search, but we'll put it on here anyway. Tire size, you're looking at a 225-45-17. And then as far as keyless entry goes, it is on the front doors. You can kind of see the little indention there and then putting your hand on the inside to unlock it. And it is not on the rear. I test every vehicle getting in it. Is it easy or is it not? So let's step into the back seat first. Got to move my drone out of the way. There we go. Okay, here we go. So stepping in, I'm five foot nine. Down we go. Definitely have to duck just a little bit. Nice and slow. And now we are in. Definitely not bad at all. Now that we're in here, headspace, 
probably I would say an inch, maybe inch and a half. My hat's taking up a little bit of space. And then leg room, there is plenty. There's probably a good four and a half to six inches, somewhere in that range. So definitely I feel very comfortable sitting back here. And listen, I say this, don't be making fun of my white pasty legs. We're not worried about that. Now back here, it's like a cloth on the back. I'm sure, I'm guessing that's probably weight savings. I don't know for sure. And then you have a leatherette everywhere else, as you can see. USB-C's, two of them back here. You do have a net on the uh, passenger side. And then in the middle, pull this down. And you've got two cup holders there and an armrest. Touching on door materials, um, it is kind of a harder plastic here. And then this is that same stuff that you're gonna see on the seat. Um, so I think they probably could have made just this area a little bit softer. That could be like a potential improvement there. Otherwise, nothing, uh, nothing too bad. Let's test the front now. Let's see. Yeah, super, super easy to get into the front. Definitely even easier than the rear and not surprisingly, right? Because of how this is still arching up opposed to in the back, it's already going down. So makes sense, very easy uh, to get into the front. Taking a look at the driver door, it does feel a little bit better. It is a little bit softer of a material, could be even softer in this area, like the stitching looks pretty good. You do have memory seating, which is super nice. Previously Hyundai and previous years, not necessarily for the Elantra, um, but for whatever reason, sometimes even on the highest trim level, um, they didn't include memory seating. Like I know the Tucson back in, I think it was 2020, 2021, 2019, there was no memory seating. So definitely nice that they're including that even on the Elantra. And then the screen is definitely nice. You have this little screen over here on the left. You have full digital here in the middle. And then obviously all touchscreen over here as well. I believe it's a 10.25 inch. If I'm wrong, I'll correct it here. But if not, that's probably correct. Uh, I believe that's pretty standard in most uh, limiteds uh, for Hyundai. There is no heads up display out in front of us. That is not an option. Uh, it does have stop and go for your cruise control uh, with adaptive and then obviously lane centering, which is super nice and Hyundai Kia Genesis always work really well. Steering wheel design, absolutely love it. Uh, I know the Tucson has a very similar wheel. I wish every vehicle of every manufacturer had this wheel. I don't care what it looks like. It is so practical. You can hold it down here, which you guys know if you're not new to my channel, love that and then also you can even hold it up here you can still hold it here which obviously everywhere you can and then you have the whole top so like it's just super nice to have multiple full grab points very very nice design over on the right the your gear shift uh the button is in the front of it so you basically just grab it pull it and then back it goes and forward take a look at the cameras we can press the button there taking a look it does have just the rear camera there is no 360 different drive modes right in front of it there you can press that you got sport smart and eco you do have dual zone climate heated seats cooled seats for both of the front seats let's take a look at the infotainment i think it's very responsive i think it's really nice touch the map there oh well i gotta touch it first i didn't even touch it there you go so very responsive, like I said, and you can have split screen. That's my one complaint on like Toyota Lexus, uh, which again, is just over the air update, kind of silly they don't do it, but love that Hyundai, Genesis, Kia do do this. Very convenient and again, very responsive, easy to swipe back and forth, nice infotainment. Taking a look at the seats, I love that they have some patterns and design to them. Um, they're really comfortable, love the cushion behind them. Uh, very easy again to get into. As far as down here, we have two different cup holders and they are kind of out of the way, which is great. A lot of times they love shoving cup holders like right in front of all your buttons, which is super annoying. So these are definitely nice being back here and out of the way. This little bridge here does remind me of the C8 that I owned at one point in time. Um, because they have a bridge, of course there's buttons on the top of it, but nonetheless, kind of makes it a little bit more driver focused. And even the screen is angled just slightly towards the driver, but definitely still accessible by the passenger. Now here for the center console um, it's kind of like a rubbery feel could be even just a little bit softer and then looking in there you could probably fit one to two tissue boxes not too bad 
And up above, we do have a sunroof. Last but not least, you've got several different charges up there. You have also a wireless phone charging pad as well. I think that's pretty much gonna do everything for the interior. I think it's time we get this Elantra Hybrid out on the road. Getting this 2024 Elantra Hybrid Limited out on the road, first thing that I noticed, not from a driving impression, but it is from the exterior. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wow. I mean, generally, whenever you get into smaller sedans previously, right, like years back, they just weren't good looking. It was just all about gas mileage. That's really what it was and cost, right? This thing looks good. Like, I really think this is a great looking car. I love the angles, it looks aggressive. So that was really my first impression. Now that I have been driving it, every hybrid that I've been in, for the most part, especially around this uh, price point for sure, you can hear a little bit of road noise, uh, even on the, just back streets, freeway as well. You can hear it just a little bit. It's more, honestly, the tire noise than anything. So I don't know, maybe there's different tires that can make it slightly quieter. It's certainly acceptable, but it is something that is present. As far as wind noise goes, don't really hear any of that. I can also hear a little bit of the motor whenever it kicks on. People always ask for the hybrids going back and forth between, can you feel it? in this vehicle you can slightly uh the only time that i can like really feel it is like you're trying to punch it right like it's it, the motor's off it's just in like the hybrid slash ev mode and then you smash it and you can definitely hear and feel the motor kick on it's maybe like uh i don't know half a second maybe a little bit less of a delay again totally acceptable but just calling out uh, some of these points. Stop, get out here. All right, let's punch it here. Front wheel drive. Holy cow, it spun the wheels. I mean, for a vehicle that's getting 50 MPGs, let's just say, that's definitely acceptable in my book. I will say some of the competition, one vehicle in particular, the new Toyota Prius, is going to give you a zero to 60 that is a little bit better so they could refine the zero to 60 slightly but again at the price point i don't think that it's bad it is a little bit cheaper than the prius by five to seven thousand dollars so you can take that for what it is but it is one point they could potentially improve slightly but i'm still happy with it coming up to our cattle guard we do every single week let's see how the suspension does and the sound More than acceptable, more than acceptable. Actually really good, especially for like a $30,000 price point. Very, very good. I generally always talk about it in Hyundai Kia Genesis. Um, I absolutely love their lane centering. Their lane centering is you can use it with and without the cruise control. Uh, it'll stay dead center of the lane. Um, I absolutely love that feature. I don't understand why more OEMs are not doing the exact same thing. I shouldn't have to set my cruise control for it to stay center of the lane and Hyundai Kia Genesis has that figured out and it is really, really refined and good and probably one of, if not the best, one of the best uh, in the industry. Adaptive cruise control, same type of thing. It is stop and go. Some of you complain that other vehicles don't have stop and go. For me particularly, I don't really care about the stop and go. I just care more about on the freeway, um, not having to jack with it all the time so it is nice to have and it does work really well let's check our blind spots over to the left that pillar is pretty skinny very easy to see over to our right also not much in the way of your view and of course there's blind spot monitoring equipped if you do have any issues with the blind spots which i really don't think you will in this vehicle the other thing that i love is just the amenities uh optional previously before in a number one a smaller vehicle number two in a hybrid you generally never had the option of cooled seats which for me in particular literally took it right off the list i'm not buying a vehicle without cooled seats now everyone has a different opinion obviously um that's just me and i'm sure there are others that are in the same scenario especially if you live where i do in arizona and it's you know 
84 degrees and it's eight in the morning. So it's gonna be hitting like 105 today and that's not even gonna be our warmest. So having those cooled seats makes a massive difference whenever you have a leather or leather wrap. Even cloth, it gets super hot to be honest with you. So just having cooled seats is super nice and they work really well. Some manufacturers, they're there, but nah, they're just okay. They work exceptionally well in this Elantra. If I could add one thing to this Elantra, it would probably be a heads up display out in front of me. Um, and I definitely would not want that to be standard because there's many of people who would not want it. And I don't want them to have to increase the price for that reason. So just having like a heads up display for, I don't know, 500 bucks or something, it's personally definitely something that I would uh, put on there. Uh, many people think if they've never experienced it, they think that it would be distracting. It's really not, especially once you get used to it. It's super nice not to look, it's just right out on the road. When you wanna see it, it's there. When it's not, you don't. Definitely uh, nice. Other than that, I don't know if there's anything else that I would really change. I guess, I, okay, one other option, and that would be a power passenger seat. Past that, there's nothing else that I would really change because again, I don't really wanna increase the, uh, the price. Power seat does add a little bit of weight. Maybe you could argue hair less of gas mileage. It wouldn't be much, but again, optional. That would be nice to have over there for the passenger. Now, we've talked on suspension as far as like going over the cattle guard and whatnot, but we have not talked about coming into some turns. So let's test this out. We are going to put it into sport and we've got a little S turn coming up. Let's test the brakes, hammering on them. Oh, really good brakes. Almost the back end tried to slide on me just a little bit, to be honest with you. Coming through it again, jamming on the brakes. Okay, and then let off of them, just steer it out. Very agile for the type of car this is. I'm really impressed, actually. That was way better than I expected. The other thing I always get asked is obviously in these sport modes, is there a difference? Yes, from Eco, obviously cut your throttle response, smart. It actually is a pretty happy medium. It kind of figures out your driving habits and does pretty well. And then sport, obviously it's gonna keep it in a higher gearing, like it's pretty much ready to go all the time. Again, not that this is a sports car, you guys know, I'm an exotic car, supercar owner. Uh, so I do love fast cars, uh, but definitely nice. And you can tell a difference in between all of the drive modes. If there is anything else that you guys would like to know on this vehicle, please just comment down below. I try to respond to everyone the best I can. Uh, next video, five things to love, five things to improve. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.